good morning and welcome to worship on this day that God has given us. I, I am so glad that you are able to join us today, whether you're joining us live via Facebook live stream or on YouTube uh, later on. And I want to uh, invite you today to um, prepare for taking communion in your home this day. So to do that, you will need uh, something that looks like or feels like wine to you and something that feels like bread to you. And after the prayers of the day, we will ha have the words of institution for you to do that together. But on top of that, we will still do drive through communion today from 10.30 to 11.30 a.m. We are so happy, again, that you are here. Just a quick reminder, you can get a downloadable copy of our order for worship for today, either on the Friday e-blast, uh, entitled What's Happening This Week. Actually, it's a Saturday e-blast now. What's Happening This Week at CLC or on our website um, at www.christlutheranlb.com. And then if you hit Opportunities to Serve at the top and then scroll down on the right-hand side, you'll be able to see the part that says Recent Posts and there you'll find it. And on top of our Order for Worship, you'll also find a kids' worship bulletin called Kids Stuff and a family devotional based on this week called God's Story, Our Story. Rich has brought in some of the beautiful, beautiful flowers from our uh, property. We are so grateful as he continues to trim up the roses and get them ready. Um, and then I want to re also remind you that our church and society emphasis for this week is the church called Fei Esperanza in Southgate. They are a companion congregation in our uh, collegium in our area and uh, we work really hard to support pastor marta and all the work she does in southgate so either donations in cash or in kind because she also runs a food pantry uh, probably seven days a week um, and we are going to read the first section of this book uncomfortable conversations with a black man by emmanuel acho who used to play for the nfl um, and it'll be this Tuesday at 7.15 if you'd like to join us. Um, also, even if you're not a reader, you can look at the YouTube videos that Emmanuel has put up uh, with the same title, Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. Um, it is uh, powerful, and he is a, a, an amazing human being who can really get to the point. Uh, Lind is here. And so every Wednesday at 2.30, we will be... Uh, uh, offering a live stream worship uh, via Facebook. And uh, then, it, of course, it will be uploaded onto YouTube, and you can watch it anytime. I know many of you work, and 2.30 after, in the afternoon isn't convenient, but just log on to Christ Lutheran LB, and you'll find it there. Um, and I just want to, again, remind you that uh, we are so glad that you are here. On our website, there's also a, a download for you, if you'd like it, called um, Email Scams and it helps you see what's going on. No um, community asking you for help with their $6 million today, Roger? Okay. Um, so anyway, I would like you to join us this morning for confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Amen. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God, and one another. Eternal God, our creator, in you we, we live, live and, and move and, and have, have our being. being. Look upon Let us with your everlasting love, love and forgive us all our offenses. Cleanse us from proud thoughts and remove empty desires. Draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God, whose love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus died for us while we were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Amen. Amen. Our gathering song this morning is Come, Let Us Worship and Bow Down.
also with you. Thank you. Let's pray together. God of wisdom, you challenge us to expand our minds to your inclusive view of the world. Teach us to welcome the stranger, whoever they may be, and to open ourselves to having our minds changed and our hearts transformed. For the sake of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Enjoy this special music this morning. A reading from Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Those who lead a blameless life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their heart. They do not slander with the tongue. They do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. In their sight, the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their health and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. The Holy Gospel for this day comes from Luke, the 10th chapter. 
Glory to you, Give, O Lord. Lord. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite. And when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. And then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and when I come back I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was neighbor to the man who fell in the hands of robbers? The man said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks so she came to Jesus and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, you, O Christ. Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God who is creator, Christ, and comforter. Amen. Amen. When I read the Gospel text for today, I found it rather odd that those who decided to divvy up the lectionary would put these two stories together. The Bible study group on Wednesday concurred. Why would the Good Samaritan story be coupled with the story of Martha and Mary? I don't know if you read the theme for today at the top of our uh, order for worship, but it reads like this. Through the parable of the Samaritan and the words of Martha, Jesus challenged his hearers to think differently, to open themselves to the possibility that their ideas of right and wrong might be off just a bit. Hmm. Might our ideas of right and wrong be off just a bit? And as I'm thinking about these ideas, it gave me an idea as we were talking in Bible study too about who is in and who is out. Now, our denomination, the ELCA, has been working, though not very diligently, I must confess, on trying to figure out how to make our denomination be more of an in denomination. It's tough work. We have to take a long, hard look at ourselves and the institutions and the structures and how they've been established to keep certain people out while accepting other people as in. Not easy work. But we're at it. 
and we try to be faithful to the theology that we have, which is we are saved by grace, and there's nothing we can do about that. But in our story today, Jesus challenges us to take a long, hard look in our own lives about who is in and who is out. Jesus points to two groups of people in these texts who are on the out of accepted Jewish culture, Samaritans and women, and brings them inside the circle of God's amazing, saving, redeeming grace. He tells the story, one which if we've been part of church world, we've heard since Sunday school days, the story of the Good Samaritan who went out of his way to help a man who had been left half dead. We don't even know if this man who had been so cruelly used by other human beings was a Jew or a Gentile. And despite, and in defense maybe, of the priest and the Levite, the reason, this reason alone may have been enough to stop them from helping an injured man that is, they didn't know if he was a Jew or a Gentile. And they also could have been on their way or on their way from the temple and to touch blood would have made them unclean and unable to stir, serve. Now, of course, this is only a story, right? A parable that Jesus was teaching. And the whole point that Jesus is making is that it doesn't matter. Our station in life it doesn't matter our ethnicity, our race, our culture, our gender. What does matter is that we help people and go out of our way to help people. It is this outsider, this Samaritan, of course, who practices true humanity and he goes out of his way to help this man. And you know, the answer to Jesus' question, so who then is the neighbor? Calls us to look at ourselves. The one who practiced mercy. And so, what about Martha and Mary? First of all, I hope you realize something really startling in this text. Well, a couple of things. But the first is the house is Martha's. It belonged to her, not to her husband, not to her brother, her. And that is very rare in first century Palestine that women would own their own property. And Martha welcomes Jesus and the disciples into her home that she and Mary share. Now the other texts tell us that they came there pretty frequently. But Mary sits at Jesus' feet and Martha works to prepare a meal. And somehow in this preparation, something happened to Martha. Now it wasn't that she was showing hospitality because of course that is exactly the story of the Good Samaritan, right? Who was praised for doing this hospitality. So it's not anything about meal preparation or hospitality. But this something that happened to Martha, did, did you catch it? Did you hear it? It says Martha was distracted by her many tasks. Somehow in her desire to practice hospitality, she lost the fact that the greatest hospitality we can show people in our homes is to listen to them. Now I have to tell you, as a Martha-like person myself, if I'm feeling under pressure, I can get so lost in the doing that I forget that being is the most important thing. But I also hope you realized that it was an incredible honor and very strange that women would entertain men in their homes. 
Mary and Martha are already on the outside because they own property. It doesn't make them necessarily women, and it doesn't make them men. So where do they fit? Outside. So Jesus, once again, moves in and welcomes those on the outside into this inclusive, amazing, saving community of God. Now, a couple weeks ago was coming out someday, something that we really didn't celebrate here at Christ Lutheran, and I hope we will do it when we are back together again. This last Sunday of January is always set aside to remind us of the struggle and the courage and the perseverance of our LBGTQIA community, sisters and brothers, our human family, that's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, questioning, intersexual, or asexual people who have longed, and in many places still long, for an equal place in the family of God as human beings who are equally created beautifully in the image of God. And this month, as a nation, we celebrate Black History Month and honor and remember the struggle, the courage, and the perseverance of our African descent Americans who also longed and in many places still long for an equal place in the family of God as human beings who are created beautifully in the image of God. We can also think today of other human beings who struggle and who courageously continue to strive for a place like indigenous people of color who, by the way, whose land we stand on this day, and we seldom recognize them. So today, as I preach to you, I recognize and honor the Tongva people on whose land this community stands. We have become increasingly aware as a denomination how very far we have to go to be what God desires for us to be as people who proclaim salvation by grace through faith. I still, as a white American, don't often recognize the privilege I have. What I do know is this, that every time we draw a line between us and others, deciding who is out and who is in, Jesus is always on the other side, begging, beckoning, urging, calling us to see as Jesus sees that there is no in or out side. There is only one side, God's side. What a joy it is to know, as un imperfect as we are, we are on God's side. God is so much on our side that God, in amazing love, sent Jesus to show us not only God's side, but God's hands and God's feet, pierced for you. And for me, no inside, no outside, no more. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Join us as we see.
We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. You made your followers uncomfortable, O Lord, when you invited them to look beyond their closest circles of belonging and to serve all your children in the same way, shake up our restricted views and open us to a bigger life where anything is possible with you. Compassionate God, hear our, our prayer. prayer. There is need of only one thing, you and your unbounded love. Show us clearly the power of accepting the other and seeing ourselves in each person we encounter and grace the presence and actions of those who serve and are served by Lutheran Social Services, California Lutheran Homes, Christian Outreach in Action, Habitat for Humanity, New Life Beginnings. Compassionate God, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. You invite us to walk gently upon the earth, treating creation as our home. Give us vision in how we live on this planet and strengthen our efforts to protect and preserve all that you have made. Compassionate God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Make us present to those who need our help and show us a world beyond the confines of our comfort zone. Use us as healing ambassadors to all whom we encounter and send your blessed and healing touch to those that we remember today, especially Justin, Judy, Ione, and Carol, Adam, Daniel, Phil, Barry, and Janice, Gary and Linda, Marilyn, Terry, Glotty, Jerry, Marilyn, Sandy, Ralph, John, Clara and John, Ethan, Charlie, and David, Mary, John, Kevin, Gable, Tamara, Brecken, Jeff, Alberta, Cindy, Evie, Bobby, Ben, Teria, Leslie, Kylie, and Crystal, Jean, Victoria, Doris, Mary, Barb, Katrina, Judy, Rudy, Miguel, Pam, Ian, Mark, Degas, Matthew, Woody, Christina, and Scott, Debbie, Jolene, Anna, Clint, and Jolene, Steve, and Jenny, those touched by the COVID virus, as well as those that we name aloud before you now or in the silence of our hearts. Compassionate God, hear our hear prayer. Our Bring safety and endurance to those directing their lives to the preservation and growth of peace in this warring world through their service as first responders, in the Peace and Diplomatic Corps, and in our nation's military, especially Jason, Samuel, Rachel, and Victor, Ethan, Michael, Aaron, D William, Damian, Gabriel, Richard, Chandler, John, Brittany, Davis, Morgan, Haley, Johnny, Brina, Sean, Emily, Stephen Andrew, Michael Joseph, Jim, Sophie, Douglas, Dominic, Jonah, and Colin. Compassionate God, hear our prayer. prayer. Make us one with all the saints of every time and place and inspire the deeds of our lives with the example of passion and faithfulness. Compassionate God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You hear all your children's prayers and gather the lost into your loving arms. Teach us to put our trust in you and in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it and said, take and eat. Do this for the remembrance of me. This is my body given for you. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for them to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death until he comes again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. 
our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You are what God made to you to be, created in Christ for good works, chosen and holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Amen. And while we sing, Jesus was a rock in a weary land, Jesus is a rock in a weary land, you may share communion with your family. Good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.